When it comes to Nintendo cartoons and anime, it's usually the really terrible ones that get remembered. The Super Mario Bros. Super Show, the Zelda cartoon, the Donkey Kong cartoon, etc. But when it comes to really good Nintendo anime, like the Japanese Super Mario Bros. movie and the Animal Crossing movie, nothing, for the most part. Why? Well, I guess I'll take on the job of giving them some love, because there's a lot more of these obscure Nintendo anime series that have apparently been lost to time. Until today. So sit back, grab your anime body pillow, I swear I don't have one, and let's check out some of Nintendo's lost anime shorts. Rewind back to the year 2012, and think about... Pit! He just made his debut in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, after being completely absent for the past 22 years. The last Kid Icarus game was on the NES back in 1986, so this was definitely a welcome surprise. And, due to possibly popular demand, Nintendo released a brand new Kid Icarus game on the 3DS, titled Kid Icarus Uprising. The game was pretty good, but that's not what we're here for today. Because to help promote the game, Nintendo released three Kid Icarus anime shorts on Nintendo Video. Yeah, that great service. These shorts were titled Medusa's Revenge, Thanatos Rising, and Palutena's Revolting Dinner. Oh, come on now, you're being too hard on yourself. Let's start off with Medusa's Revenge. What's really interesting is that all three of these shorts were animated by completely different studios, giving each of them a very distinct and unique look. Medusa's Revenge was handled by Studio 4 Degrees Celsius. Some examples of their work include shows like Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go, Street Fighter 4, and even the Kill La Kill Dragon Ball inspired fight scene from the amazing world of Gumball. That's quite the portfolio. Medusa's Revenge is the shortest of the three. Its events take place before the original Kid Icarus on the NES, and primarily follows Medusa. It starts off with a really cool shot of Pitt's wings expanding ever so miraculously, while he runs down a hallway and jumps! Wait, don't jump! Oh wait, that's right, he can fly. Never mind, giving us a very light-hearted and joyous feeling. Then Medusa shows up and changes the mood. What a surprise, Lady Valentina. You dare to meddle in my affairs? Oh, it will be different. This time. You could say she's a little upset at Palutena, and takes out her frustration on a nearby village, turning them into stone and watching them crumble. Palutena tries to stop her, but Medusa unleashes all of her, uh, frightening minions onto the world. Skyloft needs a hero, and who better than... Yeah! Pit swoops in, saving the day, blasting them with his pistol. Medusa doesn't take kindly to that, however, growing to Godzilla size. But that's not enough to keep our hero away. And then... Credits. Ooh, you're such a tease, Nintendo. It's only about three minutes in length, but does its job well. It sets up the world, reintroduces us to our hero Pit, and keeps us entertained. 10 out of 10. Up next is a more light-hearted and fun short. The title alone probably gives that away. Palutena's Revolting Dinner. The animation company Shaft handled this one. They're pretty well known for creating anime with a unique and abstract art style with shows like Kizumonogatari and Hiramari Sketch, for example. These shows are all visually very appealing, and the same can be said for this short. Palutena's Revolting Dinner is my favorite, simply because we get to see the more human and social side of these characters. Last we saw Pit and Palutena, they were fighting for their lives against this monster. But here, Palutena just wants to cook a healthy dinner because Pit eats too many hamburgers, apparently. Keep eating hamburgers and you'll turn into one. What? You're not serious, are you? Palutena is literally just the cutest thing here. She sends Pit on an errand to pick up some groceries. While she attempts to cook, the carrots come alive. What? Vegetable revolution and they want my head on the chopping block. Oh, you're so cute, Palutena. Even when carrots are throwing knives at you. So yeah, like she said, there's a vegetable revolution. The episode follows a bunch of different vegetables attacking Palutena, and she literally has to use her angelic magic to fight back, leading to all kinds of fun shenanigans, including nude Palutena in a bath, hey now. One of my potions? Get back here! 
here! It all culminates to a literal giant fight scene in which the vegetables all combine Power Ranger style to create a giant mecha vegetable monster. This is the best thing I've ever seen. After defeating it, Palutena just says, Eh, f*** it, we're going out to eat. As I mentioned earlier, this short is easily my favorite. I recently watched Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, which was a slice-of-life show with random and funny situational superpower moments, like fighting a vegetable monster, for example. I really think Nintendo should follow through with this idea, with an actual Kid Icarus anime. The last one is Thanatos... Th Thanatos Rising. It was handled by Production IG, who've handled literally hundreds of quality shows and games, including Attack on Titan, the Tale series, and Persona 5, just to name a few. This short, however, is my least favorite. It's done in this weird 3D art style that just makes it look like an in-game cutscene. It's still really solid, but not too much to talk about. Pit and Palutena talk, and then fight Thanos. Or, or whatever. Overall, these three shorts were very entertaining, and I hope Nintendo continues to make more, and maybe upload them to their YouTube channel or something like they did with Star Fox Zero, to hopefully get more exposure on them. Now this next one is... I guess, a commercial in Japan? It starts off with Olimar staring off into the night sky looking at the stars and just taking in the serenity. He then feels sadly nostalgic, seeing his family in the stars. This then makes him feel sad, considering he's on this Pikmin planet, far away from home. The Pikmin themselves then notice this desolation, and bring a flower to their friend in hopes to cheer him up. It works. This quickly brings a smile to Olimar's face, reminding him that even though he is far away from his family, he has another family that loves him very much, and wouldn't trade him for the world. <laughs> no, no, that's fine, guys, I'm okay, I promise. I just gotta go over here really quick and chop some onions or something. This honestly almost brought a tear to my face, and I don't even know what it's from. It just fades to black when it's done, not showing any advertisement or anything. But Nintendo, please, I'm begging you at this point, please make a Pikmin anime and make me cry. Splatoon! Does it need an anime? Probably not. Should there be one, however? Absolutely! And that's what Sankichi Hinodea, the creator of the Splatoon manga, did. Well, kinda. He's released two episodes of the Splatoon anime on YouTube, but it's more of a manga with animated segments here and there. But its presentation is so high quality that I can't even complain. The only problem though is that it's only in Japanese. Both the text and the voiceover. <laughs> Meaning I have no clue what's going on. But I still like looking at it. Fire Emblem, a series that anywhere outside of Japan was fairly unknown for the most part, until that faded crossover with Roy and Marth in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Ever since then, Fire Emblem has become a household Nintendo name and a big part of the Nintendo family. And with a series like this, having so many beloved anime characters, as well as taking place in a fantasy world with swords and monsters, how was there never a Fire Emblem anime? Well, if you lived in Japan in 1997, you might have seen... just that. This Fire Emblem anime was released as an OVA. For those who don't know, an OVA is essentially an anime series that wasn't released on TV, but rather on VHS and DVD. Please stay. You're already here. <laughs> sure, if it's okay. Yay! There were only two episodes released, and they were all based off of the game, Fire Emblem, Mystery of the Emblem, which is the third game in the series. The two episodes cover a very small portion of the game's huge overarching story. This story follows Marth, or as the game's rough translation calls him, Mars. Come on, Mars. <laughs> Mars! Mars! Prince Mars, forget about me. My favorite planet. Marth is busy being his precious little self that made all the girls fall in love with him. He sweeps a girl off of her feet, throws her onto a bale of hay, and they just have a fun little time. <laughs> Aww. Now this. Uh, 
uh-oh. It's honestly a fairly solid OVA. The least interesting parts, of course, are the moments where nothing's happening. It's just kingdoms talking about war and stuff, since that's what Fire Emblem is usually about. Marth is also kind of an uninteresting character. He's your typical good boy anime protagonist, you know? Always apologizing and doing what's right, being a pure, good-hearted boy, all that stuff. You probably didn't hear a word I said, did you? Uh, sorry, but I'm listening now. There's a lot of action going on. One minute it's a war between factions, then a village is under attack and Marth is fighting. Stay back, or I'll cut off your pretty little head. <laughs> There's a good chunk of action here. It also helps that the OVA is only two episodes long. So unless you're crazy ADD, you should be able to get through them while also being entertained. There is an English dub. Which is really strange, considering Fire Emblem wasn't even on most people's radar until 2001. And of course, it's got that super cheesy 90s anime dub sound to it. Our main contingent is currently engaged against the enemy forces at the center of the battle line. If you surrender to the Hura now, I will guarantee the lives of your people. I want to be an anime voice actor! Okay, here I go. Take one. Keep eating hamburgers and you'll turn into one. Gee whiz, Palutena. You sure are a bitch. 